Here's Annie Green. Senior from Suffolk, Virginia. Last five games hitting 462 is Addie Green. And on the road this year hitting 471. She's been so good throughout her entire career at Virginia Tech, but she does a good job at the top of the lineup, working herself on base. Her average is really good and she also has the power to go along with it. Here you see the numbers on the year for Green. 0 for 2 with a couple strikeouts back in 2022 against Alabama. I'm liking the way Kayla Beaver is already hitting her spots so well in this game. That's going to be the challenge against this offense is keeping the ball out of the middle of the plate, on the corners, and around the edges of the strike zone. Has had a few days off after getting the victory to close out the Georgia series last weekend. Did not appear in either midweek for the Crimson Tide. And after a one pitch out to retire Emma Ritter at the top of the order, but two hitter, Addie Green about to see a seventh pitch from Kayla Beaver. Full count. This one was really close. If I'm Kayla Beaver, I want this call. Good frame behind the plate, but now we're at three and two. And the payoff to Green. Hit back up the middle and past Callie Hevlin for a one out base hit. The team leader in batting average comes through and there's one on for Virginia Tech here in the first. This is why Addie Green is hitting 446 in that two hole because of the adjustments she's able to make in the at bat. She got jammed a little bit on those inside pitches, but eventually finds a way to get her hands to it, stay inside it long enough to hit one back up the middle for a single. And she sets up Cameron Fagan. The senior out of Florida. Preseason all ACC selection has been awarded by the conference three times already in her career. Comes from a very athletic family that we'll talk about as the weekend goes on. That one called foul. And maybe the most amazing stat, well, there are two of them, really. But Fagan is on a seven-game RBI streak. Well, when the two hitters in front of you are hitting 427 and 446, you know they're getting on all the time. And she's got the power to hit them in. That's on the ground to Cahalen. There's one, no chance for two but Green is retired. Now the cleanup hitter, Bree Peck. The junior from Royersford, Pennsylvania. Hitting 438 in the last five games, which has brought her average up to now 371. Second team all conference a season ago.
The one, two. Got her. First strikeout for Caleb Eber. And the threat ends here in the top of the first. Murphy told us had the best BP of her career so far in practice on Thursday. But you start off with Johnson, who will face Emma Limley in the circle. Johnson rips that right to McMillan and right for out number one. Emma Limley gets out number one of Jenna Johnson, who's been pretty hot this week. And Emma's really good whenever she is able to use her rise effectively. She'll mix in a drop and a change, but she relies on her rise so heavily. And she'll throw it at about 70 miles an hour Doing a lot better this year at keeping the ball in the yard. Yeah, that was really the big issue for Lemley last year. Gave up 41 home runs a season ago, but this year just two. 2022 ACC Freshman of the Year, who's quickly ahead 0-2 on Callie Hevelin. And a lot of that is because of the other pitchers on this staff who have taken some of the workload from Limley. She was their true ace last year, but has been able to throw a little bit less this year, but be more quality when she's out there. There you see Hevlin, the junior from Three Rivers, Michigan, hitting 375, or I beg your pardon, 357 in the last five games. And that's striped foul. Another O2. Got her. First strikeout for Emma Limley. Two down. There's that explosive rise. It looks so good coming out of the hand, but it ends up over Callie Hevlin's head for the swing and miss strike three. And it's so difficult for the hitter to make the decision to swing because the pitch before she throws a rise and it's in the zone. The next one is up over your head. So it's very hard to make that decision, especially when it's coming in there 70 miles an hour. It's the first ball thrown by Limley here today against Abby Dukesher, the sophomore from Kindred, North Dakota. Hitting 280 this year against ranked teams. Team leader in RBIs. And one thing we were talking about, Kaylee, discussing that game in 2022, through three innings, Emma Limley only threw two balls and both came from illegal pitches, but already a 2-0 count here on Dukesher in the first. I think this is the respect that Virginia Tech has for Abby Dukesher and her power. She hit a solo home run down at Florida State with two outs in the first inning, and they're well aware of that with their scouting. So I think they're just approaching her very carefully, knowing the power that she has. Two and two. She chased, and Emma Limley has a pair of strikeouts here. Throwing well in the offense is as potent as it's been throughout his career there. I can't say enough about the job that Pete DeMore has done at Virginia Tech, and you pointed it out, really elevating the ACC, making Virginia Tech a contender for the championship every single year, the fastest coach in program history to reach 100 wins. ACC Coach of the Year in 2019. He has just done a fantastic job coaching multiple All-Americans. And making the return trip to Tuscaloosa after a few years ago and 
a third trip to an SEC school this season. Virginia Tech's already been to Georgia and Auburn. And now he watches on as Corey McMillan, the Ranford transfer, battles down 0-2. She wins the battle. Base hit out to center to lead off the top of the second. That pitch was a little sweet for an 0-2 pitch. Over the middle of the plate, a little bit elevated. Allows Corey McMillan to get her hands there to get right back up the middle. Good timing and good job battling with two strikes. And McMillan can run 12 for 12 in stolen bases this year as the freshman Chatfield swings and misses at the first pitch. And you know, Gray, I think that's something that's going to make a difference in this game is how does Beaver pitch with two strikes against Georgia? She gave up a three run home run with two strikes, a couple hits here and there with two strikes. And sometimes I know you get excited, want to get the strike out, but Against a really good hitter, they are going to keep battling, especially when they get behind in the count. Yeah, Beaver back up 0-2 now on Chatfield. Eight RBIs in the last five games, including that three homer game on Wednesday. And she just gets a piece there to stay alive. On the ground, Hevlin with the diving stop. And the runner advances, but there's one down here in the second. Chatfield did a good job of hitting that ball hard, making Callie Hevlin make a play and allowing her runner to get over to second. Works as good as a sacrifice bunt, and you know as good as Chatfield is, she's not laying a bunt down. So runner in scoring position for the seven hitter, Maya Luco, the Reston Virginia native, a senior, who's really getting her first cracks of her career. Coach Moore was talking about how impressive she's been as a teammate and now is finally getting some chances and really cashing in. You see the batting average at 421 on the season. And that's a credit to Coach DeMore and his staff developing her throughout her career and feeling confident in what she's bringing in her senior year. See the stat there, 636 in ACC play. She's been using her opportunities well. Had four at-bats the first three years of her career. But this season, eight of 19, eight RBIs and hitting 571 with runners in scoring position. And a lot of speed standing at second base. This is around the location where Beaver needs to stay with two strikes. That's on the chalk. Probably not going to get barreled up hard. Another one, two. Luco out to right. That'll drift foul. And really, ever since Emma Ritter grounded out on the first pitch she saw to start the game, it's been a lot of at-bats like this by Virginia Tech, really making Beaver have to work. You don't get to be top five in the country 
in batting average by just rolling over and laying down. We knew Virginia Tech was going to show up. And it's a really good rise ball from Kayla Beaver. Gets the check swing. I don't know if she went around. It's a little closer on the replay than I thought live. Beaver finishes off Luco for out number two. Beaver has been so good at moving the ball around the edges of the strike zone. She again gets a strikeout on that outside drop ball right at the knees. But her sequence was so impressive in that at bat, up and in, low and out, really good spots. Ends up without number two. And a first pitch strike to the freshman, Zoe Yeager. Out of Neptune Beach, Florida, you see Alabama. Pitching-wise, has really dominated the non-conference. A little bit more of a struggle in SEC play, although two of the best offenses in the league have faced the Tide already this year. And Beaver, he's trips 14 of those 26 years. And, of course, the national championship in 2012, the first by any team in the Southeastern Conference. Marley Giles will lead off the inning, the sophomore from Clanton, Alabama, trying to get back on track. 0 for 10 in the last five. He's had some hard hit balls, but unable to find a hit last few games out. Giles out to right. The wind will hold that up, and McMillan makes a catch for out number one. I'm glad you pointed out the wind. The wind is blowing straight in in right field. Would be really surprised if anything finds its way out of the park over that way today. Yeah, you see the flags. That's honestly probably the softest the wind has been over the last two hours or so. Getting a lot of weather around Tuscaloosa, but nothing really in the general vicinity. So we'll see how Kenley Cahalan attacks with the current condition. She's been hitting well lately, 385 average in the last five games. Six RBIs, four of those hits have been for extra bases. She looked really good at Georgia last weekend and Going throughout the non-conference, she had a few outings where she was just missing it. And you felt like, you know, a few more swings and she was going to start feeling it. And I think that's what we're seeing over the last week. Trustful Alabama native. A really good take by Kenley Halen. A couple of her teammates struck out on that pitch in the first inning. She says, not me. I'll make the adjustment. That's on the ground to second. Fagan will make the play. Two down. That'll bring up Bailey Dowling, the senior from St. Joseph, Illinois. Also has seen the average go up the last few games. Second team All-SEC back in 2022 on the year hitting 301. 
batting 385 in the last five games. Same as Kimley Kahalen. One and two. That's the right pitch for Dowling to attack. She's hit or tried to hit two strikes in the zone. Now the one two from Lemley. Dowling holds off. It already seems, Kaylee, like just much better overall pitch selection by the Alabama batters here in this second inning. I agree, and I think. That's them communicating to each other, letting each other know that they need to attack that rise ball in the zone, leave anything up. Because if it's going up, it's just going to keep going up. Well, Lonely has been pitching well. A 108 ERA in her last four appearances, four walks to 21 strikeouts. Here's her 2-2, two -two. full count. <laughs> Dowling hits that to center. Ritter will run in and make the catch. Two in the inning. The updated. RPI, multiple SEC teams in the top 25. Rose out to right and just out of the reach of Lauren Johnson. Virginia Tech currently sitting at 16, and you see where the SEC teams are. Georgia 2, LSU 3. It's not the only metric the committee uses, but it's been a very important one in the past. Both of these teams on their bye weekend from their conference play, and these weekends are so important for the RPI because you can't necessarily control your conference schedule, but you can schedule tough opponents for your bye weekend and for your non-conference part of the season. And both of these teams know how important that will be when hosting a regional or a super regional. Yeah, Virginia Tech trying to move up. Dropped a little bit this week. Again, it's not always just about what your team does. It's about everything around you. And you see Virginia Tech at 16, Clemson and Duke ahead. Florida State hovering around the top 25. And another reason these games are so important, Kaylee, Virginia Tech has a road series at Duke on the schedule, but Nothing against Clemson and nothing against Florida State in the regular season. That's kind of the way it happens. Again, you have no control over what your conference schedule is, but you can schedule tough opponents outside of that. Two two now on Annika Rose, the freshman, another one from Lovettsville, Virginia. And a lot of respect to Coach Demore for scheduling this weekend. He could have very easily tried to schedule a home opponent, get his team some rest but they made a bus trip down here eight hours to play at Road Stadium and try to get a win from Alabama. It's been a really busy week for the Hokies. A couple games on Tuesday at Longwood, Maryland Eastern Shore came to Blacksburg on Wednesday. That was the game where Chatfield had the three home runs. And then some time off before that critical road series at Duke next weekend that could decide the ACC. Rose on the ground to Cahalen, and she dropped it. 
A miscue over at short puts the leadoff on here in the third. I think Halen just got her ahead of herself right here, started thinking about the throw a little too soon, bobbles it on the transfer, and now Rose is aboard with no outs. And she turns over the lineup back to the top of the order. And Emma Ritter has already won ACC Player of the Week once this season, preseason all-conference this year, and she is on a 10-game RBI streak. 0 for 1 tonight. And you see where she ranks in the conference, top five in batting average, doubles, hits, runs scored, stolen bases, impressive from the leadoff. It was an All-American a few years ago. And I like where she is in this lineup because she is such a threat in that leadoff spot. A lot of times you see slappers up there batting first, but she has power and she does have speed. She can steal bases as well. Another 0-2 count. Now the fifth time Beaver has gotten ahead 0-2 against a Hokie batter. And that smacked out to left. Two on, nobody out for Virginia Tech here in the third. Kinlinka Halen was shaded a little bit up the middle. I would guess thinking double play possibly, but Ritter just hits that one hard into the ground, finds a hole, and now Virginia Tech's got something cooking with Addie Green coming up to the plate. Well, if you're Pete Demore, this is exactly how you wanted this to go with your team leader and batting average. First pitch to Kahalen. There's one, and that's off the helmet of Ritter and out to left. The umpires will blow the play dead. Rose came in to score, but she'll have to go back. Wow. Kinlinka Halen fielded it really well and Kelly Hevelin just threw it into the helmet of Emma Ritter. Luckily, she bent down, got her in the helmet. So I think our umpires are going to meet and talk about this one. This is a new one. I got to say, Rose did come in to score. And now the question is, will it count as a run scored? Because... The first base umpire, Aaron Golden, blew that dead fairly quickly. Yeah, I think Rose is actually going to be out here because of the and allowed to make another play. And now the first pitch is collected by Kahalen off the bat of Fagan. And a bizarro inning comes to an end. Still scoreless in Tuscaloosa as we go to the bottom of the third. Gray Robertson and Kaylee Tao. Please be joined by Virginia Tech head coach Pete Demore. And coach, this week you told us that Emma Lemley is throwing some of the best stuff of her entire career. What have you seen in that regard here tonight so far from her in the circle? Our velocity is pretty decent right now and um, working ahead. So um, that's a recipe for success for her. Coach, your offense threatened a little bit last inning, but nothing to show for it. What do you guys need to do to score some runs? Yeah, we need to get the ball in the air. You know, um, the Beaver throws a lot of ground balls and um, we're not going to score a bunch of runs hitting the ball on the ground. So we got to find a way to lift it somehow. Thank you for the time, Coach. You got it. Thank you. That's Virginia Tech head coach Pete Demore. And there is Emma Lemley 
who has been cruising so far and doing so efficiently, just 28 pitches, now facing 7-8-9 in the Alabama order. And it's Kendall Clark to lead off the frame. Clark, the junior, who transferred in from Des Moines Area Community College, where she was a NJCAA first team All-American, hitting 333 this year against ACC foes. We got to interview Kendall earlier this week after a midweek game, and I loved what she said about the jump from junior college to Division One, being that she has so much trust in the people behind her, and she knows that if it's not her, someone else is going to get it done, and I loved hearing her talk about that. You had that two-for-two two night against Samford. Drove in a couple runs. This one is sent skyward. And calling everybody off is green for out number one. Lemley doing a good job of throwing that rise on the outside half of the plate. Getting to pop up for out number one. And you see the difference year to year. Great as a freshman, last year ran into bit more of a struggle. Coach Damore talked about it. it. was just throwing so many innings that by the end of the year, she'd lost a lot of velocity. She was giving up a ton of home runs. But this season, as you mentioned earlier, a lot more surrounding her in that pitching staff. So not having to carry the load nearly as much. Oh, that's off the helmet of Lauren Johnson who will scurry to first. And the problem is she showed bunt and it's a strike. Yeah, I don't think Lauren Johnson got the bat back quick enough on this rise ball in that gets her in the helmet. And I believe that will be a strike. That is as painful a strike as And Limley has another strikeout. There's three. Again, Emma Limley takes the rise ball above the head and gets the swing and miss for strike three. That pitch is moving and it is so tough to catch up to at that high velocity. Now the nine hitter, Kristen White. Sophomore out of Phoenix City, Alabama, product of Central High School, where she was three-time All-State. This year, hitting 333. Missed some time to start the season as she was recovering from injury. And she slaps that over to short. And the throw is in time. Working for your offense against Emma Emily. What adjustments do you want to see the second time around? First, I want to say thanks to Pete and Virginia Tech for allowing them to come down for a, a bye weekend for both schools because obviously it's a top 15 matchup. You don't get that very often in, at this time of the year, so appreciate that. And, you know, obviously with two strikes, we swung it uh, a ball over our head maybe four or five times, so that's the biggest thing. we got to see the ball down and battle a little bit more with two strikes and, and not go for the high stuff. Coach Kayla Beaver has worked herself out of a couple jams already so far. What makes her so good in those situations with runners on? I, I think, you know, she's a gamer, number one. You know, when you watch the Georgia game on Sunday, uh, man, she was uh, gritty. She was resilient. She was very determined. And um, I think it just comes out of her. It's kind of like a Montana Fouts thing where, you know, if somebody gets on, she, she says to herself, she ain't scoring. And just very, very competitive as well. Thanks for the time, Coach. Yeah, thanks for being here, you guys.
That's Alabama head coach Patrick Murphy. And there is Kayla Beaver, about whom he just spoke. So far, Virginia Tech has left three on base. The Hokies one for eight with runners on. The leadoff has reached twice out of three possible chances. And Virginia Tech will have the heart of the order due up. Peck, McMillan, and Chatfield. Bree Peck struck out her first time up. Not something that happens often, just the seventh time this year she's gone down. That's off the glove of Beaver. And no play for Kenley Cahalen. Once again, the leadoff reaches for Virginia Tech. When we talked to Coach Demore, he wanted his team to get it up in the air, but these ground balls are working really well, especially with working the leadoff on base. And Bree Peck just hits it right back up the middle, gets herself on. Here's McMillan. McMillan singled her first time up. Two-time All-Big South from her time at Radford has stepped in at Virginia Tech and been outstanding. To Hevlin, there's one, and a double play turn by the Alabama defense. This is what Kayla Beaver does so well in these situations. She can work a ground ball. That pitch was on the inside part of the plate, gets on the hands of McMillan, hits a ground ball to second base, and that's an easy turn double play for those middles for Alabama. 14th double play turned by the Tide, and now the first pitch is sent out to right. Lauren Johnson races in to retire Chatfield and say quick. Definitely agree with you, especially with the way that Virginia Tech has been swinging the bat. They could potentially win that league. And again, the ACC is just so strong. Florida State has led the pack for a couple years, especially at the Women's College World Series level. But NC State, I think, is better than people thought. Georgia Tech is swinging it well. So I think we'll see a couple more of those upsets like Virginia over Clemson today as that conference play keeps going. Yeah, with that offense, the Hokies are potent. Emma Limley is pitching well. Now ahead 0-2 on Jenna Johnson, who hit one real hard out to right her first time up. This time, Limley works down for the strikeout of Jenna Johnson. There's the drop ball from Emma Limley. I think that might be the first one we've seen today, but it has a lot of movement going down and in on Jenna Johnson for strike three. And that's a good pitch to have in your toolbox to work in along with that explosive rise ball. Kelly Hevlin chased one of those explosive rise balls her first time up. And she pops up a bunt. It'll go foul. You can tell just how much that rise ball is moving even when it's at the belt. Kelly Hevlin is usually really good on those sneaky bunts, but can't get on top of that. Another 0-2 for Limley. <laughs> and 
And Lemley gets Hevlin again. Two down. That pitch is just so good. She can throw it on so many levels. This time she brings it down a little bit in the zone on two strikes, right at the chest. And Callie Hevlin can't get on playing with it. Strikes out. Two gone with Dukesher stepping in. She struck out in the first. So, Kaylee, you played in that game back in 2022 against Emma Limley. What adjustments did you make as a hitter the second time and third time around? You just have to see the top of the ball and almost try to swing over the ball. Everything is moving up, and your eyes almost play tricks on you. It's not going where you think it's going to go, so you have to be very intentional about getting your barrel out in front, which is easier said than done against 70 miles an hour, but also seeing the top of the ball, trying to hit over the ball, and stressing ground balls, ground balls, ground balls. This will be the 50th pitch from Limley. And that is sent skyward. Who wants it? It's Peck. Side retired. Four scoreless innings. We go fantastic, but the Hokies offense has left three on base, four hits against Kayla Beaver, but so far nothing really all too threatening. And just, now we get into crunch time. They just haven't been able to get the timely hit yet, and I think that double play interference situation potentially cost them a run, but they've been putting putting runners on, hitting the ball hard, finding a way to, to get on, so. We'll see if they can finally strike first and score a run. Starting off with Luco, who struck out a first time up. Virginia Tech has gotten the leadoff on every inning since the first. Two and two. Payoff from Beaver. And it's fouled away by Luco. Luco doing a good job of fighting, taking pitches, fouling them off, having a long at bat. You always want that leadoff to have a long at bat. Give your team some time, some energy. Got her looking. Beaver paints the inner half for the strikeout.
Believe it or not, this is a rise ball from Kayla Beaver that she throws on the inside part of the plate, keeps it low in the zone, and it just climbs a little bit, but she paints the corner for the looking K. And that ends the run of leadoff batters reaching as the eight hitter, Jaeger, steps in 0 for 1 tonight. I had to ask Lance McMahon a couple weeks ago, the pitching coach for Alabama, what that inside pitch to righties is because it is spinning and he let me know that it's a rise ball. She throws a low rise and it climbs a little bit at the knees and I was so impressed hearing that. There you see the second year pitching coach, Lance McMahon. Who knows Virginia Tech head coach Pete Demore quite well. Here you see the Hokies head man spent some time at Missouri. Lance McMahon, a Missouri graduate, was on staff there as well for a time. Another one. Four strikeouts for Kayla Beaver. Two down. Another strikeout on that outside drop ball. This one a little bit lower in the zone. But you could tell Jaeger was just guessing a little bit after getting a few rise balls in that at bat. And I love the way that Beaver is able to mix her rise ball and her drop ball. You don't see that a lot because of the motion that it takes to throw both of those pitches but she's able to full hitters with both of them. And it's always nice when you're throwing it around 70. And look at the ball to strike ratio. That's nearly 77% strikes by Beaver. Limley's at 72% strikes. And now the Hokies will turn to a pinch hitter here in the nine spot. Trinity Martin, the sophomore from Natalie, Virginia. Trying to turn the lineup over, hitting for Rose. There you see the numbers. Pinch hitters against Alabama this year, just four of 29. Martin lifts that to left, but backing up is Johnson to make the catch. Well hit. Coming in here and getting a win would be huge for that program. And this really mimics the game that we have reflected back to from 2022. There's Giles in the air to center. And Ritter's there for out number one. And in talking about that game, Emma Limley was so good. We highlighted that. I, dare I say she's been better tonight. Had five strikeouts in that game. Already has five tonight. And you can just tell she's pitching with so much confidence in her junior season. She's owning that circle. Kahalen, first pitch to left. Green will retreat and make the catch for out number two. Here you see the pitchers tonight. Limley and Beaver, what a battle between these two. And quickly two gone for Dowling. Now Limley's done a good job of keeping people off the bases and Beaver's done a good job of shutting down the offense, especially when Virginia Tech has gotten people on. Both of them holding their own, trying to keep their teams in the game long enough for their offense to find a way. 
Well, Dowling is 0 for 1. She is, however, the only Bama batter to see a ball three in her at bat. And she might have seen one there, but instead she fouled it back, two and one. Limley is using her drop really effectively in this game, changing the eye level of the hitters. You saw it right there. She's going to go down, and then she might climb the ladder again, but she has used it to offset that rise very well. And there's ball three, just the second time that's happened for Limley. Both times, it was Bailey Dowling in the box. The first time ended with a fly out to center. The second time is ball four. And that's the first base runner of the night for the Crimson Tide. You could tell that was not where Emma Limley wanted to throw that. She was a little frustrated after that pitch. And Patrick Murphy will bring in a pinch runner. It's Kinley Pate and perhaps thinking of sending her here because Jaeger behind the dish has not caught a runner stealing yet this season. I think that's a tough decision for Patrick Murphy knowing that this is his first base runner of the night, but he also needs to get someone in scoring position. Here's Kendall Clark. Kinley Pate, meanwhile, over at first, six for six in stolen bases this year. And Clark at the plate, 0 for 1 in this game. There goes Pate. The throw is wide, and it's a stolen base for Alabama to put a runner in scoring position with two outs. Good jump by Kinley Pate. She knows what her job is as the pinch runner. Nice job getting in there. And now a base hit would score a run for Alabama. Clark, back up the middle, base hit. Kinley Pate will round third. The throw from Ritter is not in time. Kendall Clark comes up big. First hit of a night for Alabama, and it's 1-0 tied. Kendall Clark does a great job of being ready when she gets a strike in this at bat. It's in the zone. She's on top of it right on time. But the difference maker is Kinley Pate, who has had limited opportunities, has had one at bat on the season. She steals a base, and her speed motors her around to score the first run of the game. Here's Lauren Johnson. First pitch popped up. Ritter will run in and make the catch to end the inning. But when they have those runners on base, which we've talked about this before, is a double-edged sword. Like, you're not coming through on the offense, but also you have to give credit to Kayla Beaver and the Alabama defense because they're showing up and playing well. And Beaver doing a great job getting ahead. The good news is for the Hokies, if you want to respond, Everything's working out perfectly. Ritter standing in now at the top of the order, third time against Beaver. And Emma Ritter is one for two here in this game. To Kahalen. 
Dukeshire kept her foot on the bag for out number one. Nice play by Kinley Halen. This ball kind of popped up. She fields it cleanly, and it helps when you have a six-foot Abby Dukeshire over on first base to stretch for you. That's a big out number one of the All-American Emma Ritter. Here's Addie Green. She's one for two here tonight. Singled in the first, and then it was the ball that came off the bat of Green in the third that led to all the wonkiness created two outs, and now James Colsey will give Giles time to go chat with Beaver. And as confusing as a play, or as the play was, back in the third, right now that Seems to be one of the biggest of the ball game. Virginia Tech had two on, nobody out. And then the fielder's choice led to one out on an attempted double play. And then Rose was called out due to runner's interference. Yeah, you could tell that was just a game changer and kind of shifted the energy for Virginia Tech. I think there was a lot of questions around that play, but looking at the ruling, the umpires did end up making the right call. Just a tough situation and not able to get that run across. That is ripped, but foul. You can tell Addie Green is trying to make that adjustment on the drop in. It's a really tough pitch because a lot of right-handed pitchers struggle coming into lefties, knowing that if it continues to run, it's going to hit them. But Kayla Beaver has a lot of trust and goes to that glove side of the plate quite often. That time she went away and just missed full count. Another long at bat for Addie Green. Team leader in batting average trying to start something here in the top of the sixth. Did she go? She did not. First walk of a night surrendered by Kayla Beaver. And the tying run is aboard for the Hokies. This is the experience of the senior, Addie Green. She sees the ball moving away. Yes, 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 and eventually decides no. A great at bat to battle her way on. And set up Cameron Fagan. Oh for two tonight. Fourth in the ACC entering today in RBIs. And a 2-0 count. As we talked about, Fagan coming from a very athletic family Three sisters who all played college softball across the SEC. Now here she is with Virginia Tech playing at Rhodes. That's over Kahalen. Green stops it. Second, two on, one out for Virginia Tech here in the sixth. Cameron Fagan with the strength. This pitch gets her jammed but she just gets her hands to it enough to get over Kinley Kahalen. Now Virginia Tech has two on with one out for Bree Peck. 
One for two in this game. Kayla Beaver so good on the inside part of the plate to both righties and lefties. Another 0-2. Got her. That's a huge strikeout from Kayla Beaver, number five tonight. Kayla Beaver works a rise ball of her own on the inside half of the plate, 70 miles an hour, up on the hands of Bree Peck. And that's a huge out number two for the cleanup hitter. And in steps Corey McMillan trying to reverse course because the Hokie offense has stalled in these moments tonight. McMillan though, one for two. On the ground. Side retired. Kayla Beaver dances out of danger. Single back up the middle to make it 1-0. 9-1-2 for Alabama. Kristen White lays down a bunt. The throw is not in time. Kristen White is an electric ball player for this Alabama team when she is on. She does so good in that nine spot, lays down a perfect bunt, deadens the ball, gets it on the last three inches of her barrel. Now Alabama's got the lead off a board for the first time today. With Jenna Johnson at the plate. She shows bunt and pops it up. Chatfield ran in to make the catch, and that is a huge unproductive out secured by Limley. what Limley does best. Slows the game down, lets her stuff work, and it's really tough to get on top of that pitch, especially if you're trying to bunt it. Hevelin fouls off the first pitch. It's been a tough night for Callie Hevelin, 0 for 2 with a couple strikeouts. Two. <laughs> Got her again. Emma Limley has another strikeout. Limley has Callie Hevlin's number tonight. That rise ball, she's thrown it up at her eyes a couple times. This one is in the zone, but you can tell with a, a little bit of a drop in the barrel in the backside of the swing and trying to catch up to that rise ball, Emma Limley's gonna win that battle. Now Dukeshire, she attacks high and comes up empty. 0 for 2 here tonight. Little surprised White has not taken off at any point. Over at first base, she's three for three in stolen bases this year. Yeah. 
That was a hit and run that was fouled back. There goes Kristen White. The throw is wayward from Jaeger. And another Alabama runner is in scoring position. You mentioned Nick Gray and Kristen White heard you. She gets a good jump, but it doesn't matter. The throw is offline. And now she's in scoring position with two outs for Abby Dukeshire, who's trying to shorten up and make an adjustment, get something through the infield. Limley gets the strikeout. Give her seven. Done so well with runners on and in scoring position. Chatfield fouls off the first pitch. Now this is a player who can change the game in one swing. The ACC leader in homers, Michelle Chatfield, is 0 for 2 tonight. First in the conference with the 13, that's top five in America. First in the ACC in slugging, and also reaches when leading off an inning over half the time. There's Kahalen. One down. Chatfield is not going to reach to start off this inning. Kinley Kahalen has had plenty of action over there at shortstop tonight. She makes this play in the 5-6 hole, and the new first baseman, Emma Broadfoot, has got it no problem. Yeah, Broadfoot in for Dukeshire. Over at first, and now Luco. Stands in. She struck out twice. That K looking in the fifth, though, was a long battle with Kayla Beaver. Luco back up the middle. There's Kahalen. What a play! <laughs> we'll turn. To a pinch hitter. And it's the freshman, Emma Mazarone. Trying to keep the game going. A pitcher as well, Mazarone. Is hitting 444 this year with two outs, 227 average on the season. This is a good opportunity for a freshman. You know her heart rate is up a little bit. You don't want to lose. And she feels that in the circle sometimes. But tonight, Pete Demore wants her to feel that in the batter's box. 
two for three in the last five games. But down in the count, one and two. Swing and a miss. Kayla Beaver slams the door. And Alabama wins a thriller.